I'm Lauren Gary Rice, the XI Guru. Welcome to the show. I love this camera angle because it makes me feel short, so that's that's awesome. I get a lot of questions via email on my YouTube portal. Oh, you know, your workouts are awesome, but do you ever do anything normal? Do you do normal workouts? Of course I do normal workouts. There's just there's nothing exciting about normal workouts. This is a little project that I put together for a couple friends of mine, both having some postural and back issues. So I want to whip them back into ship shape. This is a program to be done in pieces. Even if it's just one superset a day. You know, if we got five minutes, just pick two. Make sure we get one anterior, one posterior, front and back of the body. And go with it to failure. Get the hell on with your day. Zip the knees together. Keep the pelvic floor tight. Maintain posture. Pinch the shoulder blades together. Heads up. As long as breathing is continuous, this one is not really picky about breathing, but I like to exhale as I fall back so that when I get back over here, I've blown all the air out of my stomach and I can pull my knees in tight to my chest. And then I feel like if I come up and I inhale, I can double check my posture. Very important with the 100 to just remember a couple of things. Before anything begins, before any movement, we need to draw the belly button in. I like to sometimes lay down on the floor and put my hands on my belly button and push my stomach all the way in and try and keep it there. All right, because that's going to flatten the spine out and support our lower backs because our lower backs going to get a lot of work. The height of the legs relative to the body and the floor is going to determine the difficulty. Also, the length of the inhale and the exhale in the 100 is going to determine the difficulty. So I might do a 10 count inhale, 10 count exhale with an arm flutter, but a beginner might do a three count inhale, three count exhale with an arm flutter. Granted, you won't get to 100, you'll get to 99, but same difference, right? All right, here we go. We're gonna take a big inhale, prepare. And I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna keep space between the chin, my chin and my chest. Both legs are up, and I'm just gonna inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. All the while, my stomach's not moving. My stomach is staying tight. Now, a lot of times, for beginners, we have them leave the feet flat on the floor. So this is a progression. And then we just focus on the upper body, space, shoulder blades, and breathing with the flutter. So this would be a progression. This would be a progression, one leg. Obviously you would change legs. And then we could go tabletop, 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knee, zip the knees together. So I'm going to show a bird dog progression here. And all a bird dog is, is just opposite arm, opposite leg. Okay? So, we just be here. We reach up, look up, arm and leg. Squeeze. Feel the line we create across the back of our body, okay? You come down, we can stay that side. We can alternate. So that's mid-range, right? Lower level, if that causes pain. We've got just Superman's. Arms up. We go here. We want to lift the head to activate the entire spine. Notice even here, we still feel that line shooting from our fingertips all the way down to the contralateral side of the foot. I like to keep my toes pointing down because I feel like it helps me stretch my hip flexors. I have a lot of females do this exercise or variations of this exercise with their toes pointed out to the side so that they get just that little extra bit of squeeze right there in the crease and glute medius and minimus. My favorite way personally to do bird dogs is from a plank, fingertips and hands wide and same thing, just go opposite. Opposite, 
And then we can push back to find child's pose. Pretty normal thus far, right? Okay. Green tea, a little pineapple juice, a little honey. Great for sore throat, hoarseness. All right, so a couple cues here. Like I said, we're gonna draw the stomach again. See how it rotates the hips. I like to grab under the knee because I like to really stretch. We can grab over the knee, we don't have to grab it all. If you grab over the knee, be careful. A lot of pressure on your menisci. From here, free toes pointed up. Abs are tight. Inhale, lift the shoulder blades off the floor. Keep space between the chin and the chest. Good, exhale, we're gonna change. Exhale, change. very important to mention that there's not a lot of space being created underneath my spine, all right? Shoulder blades stay up, lower back stays down, neck gets tired, we can go here. We're supporting the head and the neck. We're not pulling, because we have to keep space here. And also crisscross. Shoulder blades never touch. Alright, so I'm down here for the open book. With the open book, I want my hands underneath my shoulders and my knees underneath my hips. And so from here, I'm going to start with my right arm. Take my right hand, put it behind my head. I'm going to take a big inhale and I'm going to open up to the ceiling, keeping both of my knees down, pinching my shoulder blades together. And then when I exhale, I'm just gonna come through the arm and try and touch that elbow to the knee. And then inhale open, looking through my elbow to the ceiling. I like to extend the arm and try and stack my shoulders on top of one another. And then reach through. If we're doing this with a partner, the partner can take the hand here and lightly pull. And when we get here, Partner can take the hand your lower shoulder on their knee and gently pull back. Always be aware of the difference. As much as we like to think we are symmetrical beings, we are definitely, definitely, definitely asymmetrical beings. Whether it's from injury or poor maintenance, 